Hi, JP Fournier of the Movie Jerks, and we got some uh, viewer mail, which is great. Oh, look at this, a letter from Nan Nan. I haven't actually seen a Land Nan in a while. Oh, a Christmas card, isn't that sweet? We sent this card on this wintry day uh, to let you know that we'd like to say, go fuck yourself. Love, Nana. Uh, well, let's do some Hallmark reviews. Here we go. Hallmark Christmas films are back again and still growing in popularity. This year they're offering an impressive 40 new feature films that the Hallmark Channel started airing well before Halloween. Every year, in search of a new holiday classic, I force myself to watch 25 Christmas movies I have never seen before, alongside 25 Hallmark Christmas films I have never seen before. Will it be Hallmark that offers a new Christmas classic? Well, let's take a look at some of the Hallmark films I have watched so far. Spoiler alerts are in effect. Karen Kingsbury's Maggie's Christmas Miracle. Now, I'm starting to believe Hallmark doesn't understand the difference between a coincidence and a miracle. Maggie's Christmas Miracle. Now, I'm starting to believe that Hallmark doesn't understand the difference between miracles and coincidences. After her father left her on Christmas Eve when she was 13, Where's Dad? And later, her husband left her as a single mother on Christmas Eve. Dad's coming home, right? No. Baby Dad's not coming home, you know that. Maggie lives with a chip on her shoulder about Christmas. God, for Christmas, can you make my mom happy? And let me tell you, for obvious reasons, this lady hates Christmas. Just look at her office. Oof. Thank you. Or the outside of her house. My word. And man, oh man, look at the inside of her house. Good Lord. That could only be the decorations collected throughout multiple years of hating Christmas. Sometimes I wish I could live just right there, inside this little dome, where everything is safe and quiet. Now, I'm not someone who likes realism in my Hallmark Christmas movies, so let's put this nightmare aside and take a look at the next film. Christmas Scavenger Hunt. Ooh, this sounds exciting. A scavenger hunt is defined as a game in which organizers prepared a list of defining specific items, which the participants seek to gather or complete all the items on the list, usually without purchasing them. The goal is to be the first to complete this list or to complete the most items on the list. Upon looking up this definition, I possibly did more investigative work on scavenger hunts than the writers of this film. In this movie, the participating teams are not given a list of items as much as they are sent periodic riddles that instruct them to complete Christmassy themed tasks. You get your next clue when you show proof you completed your first task and Everybody's clues are in different order, okay? But even though we ignore scavenger hunting basic rules, this film still pits the teams on a race against time to complete their tasks. So let's take a look at this fast-paced action race to see who comes out the victor. Well, it's a good thing I got my truck. I guess we're off to the woods to see about a tree. Okay, here we go. So Anytime now. You said it was so important because you were coming back this year. Hmm. Did you get it for him? Uh, not really. I mean, I took him out here, I found one, I cut it down, took it back to his place, I set it up. Getting a Christmas tree at fast oh. pace. I think we can do better. I mean, we just got here. Look at all these trees. That one. I did say race against time, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Agreed. Agreed. What are you waiting for? Oh, yeah. 
Okay, task complete. Like we have an appointment with the big man. Next task, Santa Claus. Here we go. And we're off. And nothing will slow down this team. What did you wish for from Santa? To have my mom home for Christmas. She's across the ocean in the army. Oh, I see. I hope Santa can make that wish come true. Me too. See you later. Okay. Bye. Bye, Dex. <laughs> Isn't this game a hoot? There we go. Task complete. Next task, gingerbread houses. A gingerbread house to make. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> okay, gingerbread houses. Simple, perfect, easy. Needs to be started right away because gingerbread... Okay. What? Uh, nothing. Just... Well, of course, uh, after you change your clothes because all people racing against time need to look nice. Ugh. This may take some skill, but it can be a thrill. This one's hard. Let me see, young one must mean child. They specifically mention beyond a toy. Okay, doing something selfless for somebody else. A call back to the depressed kid. Nice job. Hey, Mr. Dustin. Hey, Miss Belinda. Hi. Hi, Dex. Oh, um, I think your present just came early this year. Huh? Oh, the museum has this old military wing. It's funded by the Corps. So I just I gave them a call, explained the situation, and they pulled some strings. Well, phew. I was lucky that this task came up for this guy to earn another point, or else this kid would have been shit out of luck for seeing his mom on Christmas Day. In the end, the team sang bad karaoke, only to solidify that a Christmas scavenger hunt has next to no scavenging and little to no hunting. That can always be used. North Pole. Last year I reviewed the sequel to this film. So let's see how the first one pans out. In this film, we find out that the North Pole's main source of energy comes from these light balls growing on trees that are powered by the spirit of Christmas of people. Recently, these lights have been dimming, and if they turn off completely, we will lose Christmas altogether. So it is up to a spunky elf named Clementine and a little boy beaming with the Christmas spirit to re-energize the Christmas spirit of the world and save Christmas. With the help of the kid's mom, who's an investigative reporter, the three decide to solve the mystery on why a small town has cancelled the tradition of lighting a Christmas tree. This leads them down a wormhole of secrets and corrupt politicians that have plans on tearing down and rebuilding over the tall Christmas tree. The movie's twist is that the rich man who bought the property is planning on rebuilding an ice rink around the Christmas tree and dedicating it to his wife, who loved Christmas. Penny would have loved this. Friends, neighbors, reconnecting for at least one special night. His dedication to his wife is to give back to the community and help them get into the Christmas spirit even more. So let's recap. Christmas is dying. All because a small town has lost their Christmas spirit because they cancelled one event called the Lighting of the Christmas Tree. They are not having this event because a man who loves Christmas wants to make the future more Christmassy. So because our protagonist started meddling around and playing Scooby-Doo, his contribution towards a small town was nearly lost and therefore Christmas was nearly killed. So, who's to blame for this near end to Christmas as we know it? Yep, this asshole. So what can we do? When you figure that out, be sure and let me know. The same jackass that needs this place to be powered up by people's Christmas spirit is the same dickhead that set up an energy system that may crash and take out Christmas altogether if one small town decides to take a step back so they can celebrate Christmas better in the future. 
Therefore, we almost lose Christmas because one small town was losing their Christmas spirit. And they were losing their Christmas spirit because they already had Christmas spirit all along? Uh, you know what? Who cares? In the end, the two handsome couple get together. And isn't that what Christmas is all about? Hey, Hallmark. Merry Christmas, everyone! Everywhere! Usually at the end of these reviews, I have one Hallmark Christmas movie that I believe is worth recommending. Usually. For more information about The Movie Jerks, you can go to www.themoviejerks.ca.